Hey, hi, hello. It is the end of 2019, the end of a decade, and that is wild to me. This year has been one of the longest years of my life, for better or worse, and sitting here now leads me to mindful reflection. The year began as usual in January, and now it is ending in December. And the months in between were there too, 10 of them. In fact, in January, I went home to see my family, especially my mom, Peanut. I also worked a little bit, and at the end of the month, I saw Elton John perform his last concert at the Staples Center. I documented most of February for you right here, making about 20 or 25 videos throughout the month. The last day of February is also when I started working on a TV show called Euphoria, where I began a wonderful friendship with a friend of the channel, Jenny Spiteri. March began with me and my friend Kelly crashing a weird David Dobrik party. I saw Billy Joel for the third time in concert, and I bought this denim jacket that I haven't taken off since. Then in April, I- <coughs> David, stop. What are you going on about? We get it. How did you- why are you drinking- You have to tell them about the thing. What are you- that thing? Yes. That thing. Oh yeah! I'm pretty sure Jason Sudeikis is my dad. Now before I unpack this, you should know that my dad is actually my dad. And I know that because I didn't go a day for 18 years growing up in my hometown without somebody approaching me on the street and saying something, something, spitting image of your father, something. So I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not going to order a paternity test, but hear me out. Daniel Jason Sudeikis was born on September 18th, 1975, a Virgo in the year of the rabbit. For context, this was during the Ford administration on the heels of Nixon's resignation, and in America, David Bowie was topping the charts with his young American single, Fame. Although he was born in Fairfax, Virginia, he grew up in Overland Park, Kansas, his proper hometown. Overland Park is a suburb on the Kansas side of Kansas City, one of my dad's favorite cities. He lived there during the 1980s. Coincidence? Think again. But if this is a case for Jason being my dad, then we need to fast forward to September 18, 1994, his 19th birthday, and the approximate date of my conception. Jason had just graduated from high school, a young, waspy basketball boy, and I'm sure eager to sow his wild oats. Now, I would never accuse my sweet mother of sleeping with Sudeikis during this period, but with a face like that, I would not bat my eye at the notion. No, this feels more like a classic switch to birth phenomenon. I was born in Enid, Oklahoma, about four hours away from Overland Park by car, about 102 hours by foot. And to those who live in Enid, any city with more than 100,000 residents is considered a metropolis, an urban getaway. Kansas City falls in line. Isn't it possible then that a young starlet from Northwest Oklahoma might want to get away for fall break, a little excursion to see the city sights while simultaneously a young Jason Sudeikis is getting illegally hammered for his 19th birthday? And could they have enjoyed each other's most intimate company before the woman had to return to Oklahoma to finish her first semester at Northern Oklahoma College to pursue her associate's degree in business? And if so, couldn't she nine months later give birth to this handsome devil on June 21st, 1995? Jason would continue his path during the booming improv comedy scene during the late 1990s, while I would begin first grade at Glenwood Elementary School, home of the Grizzlies. This is all news to me. This is exciting, but news nevertheless. And all of that seems like a pretty solid case for me being the son of Jason Sudeikis, but you might be wondering, David, why would you even be led to believe that he's your dad in the first place? When I was 10 years old, Jason began his tenure as a featured player on the acclaimed sketch comedy show, Saturday Night Live, and he remained on the show until I graduated from high school in 2013. I guess we both graduated that year. For some quick television theory, it's often noted that from ages 14 through 18, we have our greatest appreciation and consumption of Saturday Night Live. That's usually the period that we say was the best period for the show. And Jason's time on the show fell right in line with that period in my life. I always identified most with his characters. He was extremely funny, yes, of course, but not wacky. Welcome back to the Fiesta Ballroom here on Carnival Cruise Triumph, okay? Uh, I'm your cruise director, Dean, and this is my assistant cruise director, Diana. In a two-man improv scene, he would probably be described as the straight man, as opposed to the more character type, uh, more of the Bill Hader from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Maybe he's my dad? Hello, darkness, my old friend. 
But as a fan of subtlety and knowing when to play your type, I was always drawn to Jason's performances on the show. In the heat of his time at SNL in 2011, he starred alongside Jason Bateman and Charlie Day in the Let's Kill Kevin Spacey movie, Horrible Bosses. I'll tell you what, I'd like to bend her over a barrel and show her the 50 states, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what that means. That's a saying. Not a fluke, Charlie Day and I are the same height. I'd be a great stand-in. If you know him personally, please let him know if he's looking for a regular. My email address is Jason and I look uh, eerily similar in some photos, actually. It was this photo in particular that got this ball rolling in the first place. Jason taught me that a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant man is allowed to look cool AF with proper grooming. And speaking of grooming, we both grew out our hair around the same period of time and cut it within a week of each other without either of us realizing it. I got my haircut at a salon in Burbank. He got his haircut on the Ellen Show at Warner Brothers Studios in, you guessed it, Burbank. Look, I know, I said at the beginning of the video that Jason is probably not my dad. Now I'm doubting my own judgment. We've even appeared in the same movie together. We're both in Book Smart. He plays the school's principal in the movie I throw condom water balloons and get scared at a party. That's less important. My point is that we were both in the same movie and we both had thrilling conversations with the movie's director and Jason's wife, Olivia Wilde. I'm sorry. I'm getting heated, but um, he's my dad, you know? We look similar. We play similar types, and it's just hard being so close to him out on the West Coast with, without him knowing. So I don't know, maybe this is a cry for help, or maybe just a letter of appreciation, but thank you, Jason Sudeikis, for confirming that you can have a career in this town as a straight, white, cisgender man. It is tough out there for guys like us, but you've been a Rosetta Stone, a North Star. So, humbly, I thank you. <laughs> it's no secret that 2019 was a real year of cool for me. I bought a denim jacket, a leather jacket, a pair of black jeans, and I stopped wearing so many khakis. I got a cool pair of Australian beach shorts for the beachgoer that I am not, and now I want to show you our sponsor for today, a cool pair of shoes. The capitulation of cool. Beckett Simonen, or Simonen, I have no clue, is a direct-to-consumer shoe company that sent me these cool shoes months ago, but I still haven't opened them. Here they are. They retail for $200 and look nearly identical to a pair of $90 Nikes, but you should buy these shoes because they are cool. Cool, 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 cool. Denim jacket. Australian shorts. Cool shoes. This is the height of cool. We found it, really. And I feel good cruising into 2020, looking like the big shot that Jason Sudeikis allows me to be. So this is for you, Jason. May the world shine upon you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead, click the like button on the video itself. That helps me know that you like the video and it fuels my ego to write another video. If you wanna see more videos like these because you like them, go ahead, let me know in the comment section down below and also subscribe to the channel. Also in the comments, let me know how was 2019 for you or if you wanna take it a step further, nine steps further, how was the 2010s for you? Mine was transformative, difficult at times, but mostly, very cool. So let me hear all of those words in the comment section down below. With that, I'm gonna go. So, yeah. I will see you in 2020. 2020, a new decade. Bye? I hope you know, the straight white bit in the middle there, that, uh, that was satire. Uh, I am straight and white, but I know my privilege. I'm fun. Okay, well now here's some good news. All right. Live from New York, it's so